Hello my beautiful friends and welcome to my best art supplies of 2018 video. I am going to show you the art supplies that I have enjoyed using the most this year. I just want to clarify that for an art supply to make it into this video, to make the cut, it had to be at the crossroads of loved and used. Because I do have some art supplies here that I love, but I haven't as yet really used them very much. To get into this video, an art supply had to be absolutely loved, but used time and time and time again. So that's where these supplies are coming from. Okay, first up, I have got the brushes. So these are my most used brushes. On the left, we've got the Neef brushes. Neef is an Australian owned company and they make great brushes. None of these brushes are very expensive. They're, they're pretty economical brushes actually. So this is the one inch wash brush for doing large areas of color. And then the round brushes. Um, these are Taclon, so these are synthetic, synthetic, which I really like. I've got a size 12, a size eight, a size zero, and over here, these are Princeton brushes, which I got from Officeworks. Again, very inexpensive, round brushes, but they're great. And I've got a size six and a size two. Out of all of these, again, my most used will be the six, the two, and the zero. Absolutely couldn't do without these. But yeah, this is my brush selection that I go to. This is my go-to time and time and time again. The next thing I have for you are these Jane Davenport mixing palette sheets. Let me tell you, these little beauties are so useful. I didn't realize how much I was going to love them. And so inside you get 50 palette sheets and they come in these two styles with a face and with a color wheel style. And you open it up and they're just tear offs. As you can see, I've got one left. They're slightly waxed and you basically pop your paint on there and mix up your colors. I do a lot of color mixing. I would rarely ever use a color straight from the palette. I need to mix and often my palette is already covered in mixed colors and I have, I used to have plates lying around my desk all the time but they just get in the way and I run out of room. Enter the mixing palette sheets. Ta-da! So, so useful. In fact, now I have these lying around everywhere, but they don't take up as much room. And they're easy, like I can just keep them stacked like that and I can go back and activate some of these colors if I want to, and, and I just find them so useful. They are a bit wasteful, paper-wise. I mean, you know, you use them and then you throw them away. So there is waste involved there. But I have to say that when you've got a bazillion colors and palettes and mixes going on everywhere, it is super, super handy. I love them and I will definitely get a refill. While we are on the subject of Jane Davenport, I would also like to add her acrylic paints to the list. She does beautiful sets of acrylic paint. The brights are just adorable colors, which I have used a lot over, the, over 2018. The paint itself is lovely, it's opaque and it's thick, but it's still very easy to spread. And sometimes I add a bit of airbrush medium to it as well, just to thin it out and make it even more spreadable. It's beautiful. Her colors are gorgeous. My favorite things really, uh, these flesh tones, so useful, so useful. And the neutrals like that, I mean, that is just a beautiful color. I mean, it's, it's right up my alley. It's totally my thing. I love blush. I love these neutrals. I would create something like that. That's her flesh tone acrylic under there with pencil on top. Soft neutral backgrounds. Just beautiful. I love it. Big fan of her acrylic paint. That brings me to my next art supply on the list, which I use in conjunction with acrylics a lot. Prismacolor pencils. These little gems. I don't know what I would do without them. So I do have a, a good selection, but these are my most used colors and these are the neutrals. Again, I love my neutrals. Well, we've got chestnut, um, 
that is French grey, clay rose, henna, light peach, nectar, such a great colour, uh, blush pink, warm grey and peach. So, so good. So handy for portraits, for pretty much anything. I just, I love these Prismacolors and I, I think nearly every time I make something, I get out these colours. My most used colour by far is my Burnt Umber. I mean, look at that. Look at that. It's just so well used and loved. It's perfect for shading. I adore Burnt Umber. I don't know what I'd do without it. And also my Colourless Blender for blending the colours in together. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Next on the list, my Palomino Blackwing 602. I love this sketch pencil. You really can get a beautiful variety of sharp, light, dark and soft with the one pencil. It's a pleasure to use and I find that I just, I draw really well with it. You know, sometimes you gel really well with a tool and I gel really well with the Palomino Blackwing 602, as do a lot of people. It's a great sketch pencil. So one of the cool things about the Palomino is obviously the adjustable eraser. So at the end of the, you have a little clip at the end here. So as you use the eraser, you can adjust it and bring it up a bit, pop it back in and you can buy extra uh, new erasers to put in. But I never use up a whole eraser anyway. So I have a few of these hanging about. Um, so yeah, that's one of the like the awesome things about the Palomino, but really it is just, it's, it's a great pencil to draw with. There's something about it. There is definitely something about the Palomino Blackwing and I've loved using it. I've used it all through 2018. Next on the list are my Daniel Smith watercolors. So yes, these little beauties are a pretty major financial investment. They are. But having said that, holy golly gosh, they are amazing. Such incredible colours, so granulated, so rich, so full of depth and moodiness and beauty. They really are something special. We all know the colours are beautiful. I thought I might just share with you the colours that I have been the most obsessed over this year, starting with Moon Glow. Ah, my beloved Moon Glow. I have used this this year, in 2018, to absolute death. Talk about obsessed. But it is such a gorgeous colour. It's such a magical, otherworldly sort of colour. I mean, purple is anyway, but this particular, this particular shade of Moon Glow is something special. Uh, look, for example, I did this. So this is all Moon Glow, and this kind of, these purple in the teacups are all made with Moon Glow. Flowers are Moon Glow. Here is a wash of Moon Glow just to show you how much depth and beauty there really is. Let me know if you can see this properly. You can see it well. I and mean, look at that. It's just spectacular. Spectacular in every way. I made this to use as a background for something. Um, another colour that I absolutely have loved, Potter's Pink. I've used lots of Potter's Pink because it's a neutral, it's a light pink. I love that sort of thing. It's just a very, very gorgeous, useful, beautiful colour. And um, what else? Oh, Soda Light. I've used a lot of Soda Light Genuine. Absolutely stunning. Kind of a cloudy, grey, blacky, bluey, beautiful. Um, I have this piece here, which, you know, this has got Moon Glow and Soda Light in it here. And the two of those colors together, I used a lot. So yes, Daniel Smith's, I mean, I, 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 I have used them so much this year and absolutely loved every moment of it. They're so, so gorgeous. And if you can afford the investment, well worth it because you know, they go a long way as well. So absolutely beautiful. Whilst we are on the subject of paint, I'm going to add in the Windsor and Newton Designers Gouache. I've only had these for a short time, maybe a month, so, you know, it could be a stretch to say most use of 2018, but since I got them, I cannot put them down. It's like nothing else exists. 
They are so beautiful. <laughs> Such so gorgeous to use, so rich, so matte, so opaque. The colors are so bright. They're just bloody awesome. I love them and I, I can't get enough of them. So they have to go in to this list of top supplies because they, they've just made my day, like made my year. They're so, 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 so beautiful. I wish that I'd, I'd gotten into them a long time ago. I absolutely adore them. The colors are stunning, absolutely stunning. I particularly love Lamp Black. It's such a versatile, gorgeous black. You can get it to be so smoky or so deeply opaque. I just love it. They're all beautiful colors. Olive green, Naples yellow, burnt umber, Bengal rose, fabulous. I love these Windsor & Newton designers gouache. Absolutely love them. Just beautiful. Highly recommend them. Lastly, I am going to share with you my sketchbooks. And I have three sketchbooks. Reason being, I'm sure you'll find the same thing, is that you go through phases with paper. Sometimes you want a smooth paper. Sometimes you want a tooth and a texture. Sometimes you want large, sometimes you want small. So I have gone through these different phases over the course of the year. And I have three different main sketchbooks that I've used. And each one of them I've really, really enjoyed and I highly, highly rate. So I'd like to do a quick share of those with you. Now this not a this isn't a, a sketchbook tour or anything, so I'm just going to quickly show you the book and talk about the basics of it. The first sketchbook I have for you is the Stillman and Byrne Zeta series. This is a beautiful book, and I chose it because it has 270 GSM heavyweight paper inside, so it can really, really handle a lot of paint. A lot of water it's mixed media pa paper basically but it is super super smooth like I, I um I can't believe how smooth it is and at this point in time when I use this book I wanted something that had like virtually no tooth you know just really really smooth natural white paper and that's exactly what I have here it is a spiral bound one I don't really like spiral bound so much but I have absolutely enjoyed using this book. The paper is incredible. It's hot press and like I said, super heavyweight, lays flat and it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. I highly recommend it if you want that heavyweight, smooth, smooth, hot press paper. Gorgeous. The next book, sketchbook that I use that I highly recommend is the Jane Davenport Large Mixed Media Journal. Well. The small one would be fine if you wanted a small journal too, but I happen to have the large one. I think this is a wonderful book. So I've reached the point where I didn't want smooth paper and I wanted a paper that had a bit of texture and a bit of tooth. And I tell you what, the beauty of this paper is that it actually has um, tooth on one side and it's smooth on the other. It's hot press and so you know one side is textured and one side is smooth so you kind of get that choice of what you'd like to use it's beautiful paper it's 200 GSM it's hot press the book is is stitched it's hard it's hardback hard bound so it lays flat beautifully it's so nice to use like it's an absolute pleasure to use actually it really is a great journal, a great, great journal. I highly recommend it. Um, it has this fabulous canvas cover that you are supposed to paint with mixed media or what have you, but I just haven't got around to it yet. I actually really love the feel of the canvas cover too. So I totally rate this journal. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really, really good and I will definitely get another one. I would probably get another one of both of those journals. The last sketchbook slash journal that I want to show you is this little B6 by Brie, made handmade by Brie from Documented Journey on YouTube. Uh, this is from her Etsy store and she hand makes these journals, so it's hand bound with Strathmore mixed media art paper, so very very high quality art paper for mixed media and she stitches them, hand binds them and does her own original watercolour artwork. You know, there's something really, really sweet and special about having a book that's been handmade by the artist and painted in their own original artwork. I think it's really, really beautiful. It's a really beautiful thing to have and to use, and it's very precious to me, actually. Very, very, very good and easy to use. I've totally enjoyed it. The paper, as I said, is Strathmore Mixed Media Art Paper. 
So it's high quality paper. And, you know, I've got molding paste in here. I've got layers and layers of watercolor, collage. It's great. You can take it. It's really good fun to use. I've got watercolor, acrylic, all sorts, back and front. And you know what? It's great. It's a really, really great journal and I've thoroughly enjoyed using it. You can get them from her Etsy store. Really sweet. The last thing I would like to share with you for my most loved and used art supplies of 2018, this list really wouldn't be complete without my iPad Pro 12.9 inch and the Apple Pencil. I have absolutely loved using this this year. I didn't even know that I would love it so much, but I do. The iPad Pro is incredible to use. The software Procreate, the app, is absolutely amazing. For a $10 app, I can't even believe how amazing it is. And of course, the Apple Pencil is just beautiful, beautiful to use. So for making art, I put a uh, paper-like screen protector on top so that it has a slight matte texture which makes it a little bit easier to draw I will say that and inside procreate I have made pieces like this which is all done on procreate and oh, except for the background which I've imported and I um, absolutely love it I think it's 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 such a joy to use it's so intuitive there's so much to explore so, and I, and I would like to do much more with it next year as well and share that with you guys too, because I like to combine the two. I like to make things using paint and brushes and paper, put them on, digitize them onto the computer and start messing around with them, then bring them back onto the iPad, add some more things and move things around. It's really, really beautiful. It's an amazing process. And I would love to share more of that with you. So there we are. This has been my little walkthrough of my most loved and most used art supplies for 2018. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye for now.